welcome to Geeky Girls Knit. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Damaris, also known as Damaris Dash A Bit Weird. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Wednesday, November the 7th, and this is episode 11 of Geeky Girls Knit. 11. We're in double digits. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, we would like to welcome back uh, all of our returning viewers, and we'd like to say hello to all our new viewers. We're glad to have you. Thank you for giving us a chance. Um, one important announcement that I posted um, online, but just to make sure that you get this information, we have moved our show notes website to a new host after the issues of a couple of weeks ago. And so now you can find us at Geeky Girls Knit, G E E K Y G I R L S K N I T dot blogspot dot com. Geeky Girls Knit dot blogspot dot com. And I've updated everywhere online so that that is um, um, reflected everywhere. But um, just an announcement so that you know that. All right, are we ready to get started? All right, here we go. going to start with what's on our needles. So what's on your needles, Damaris? Socks, still. Okay. Rainbow socks. You've made progress. Yes. So have you finished, finished the decreases yet? Almost. That's good. That's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Their socks. You are on your feet. A step in the right direction. <laughs> I'm a little silly today. So um, that is on US 4's 3.5 millimeters in the Bravo Jacquard color yarn colorway rainbow. Mm -hmm. And the pattern's from our local yarn shop, Yarnies. Mm -hmm. You gonna hold them up there close so they can see them? So how much more do you have to go on your decreases? Mm, this is the last decrease row. Wow. And then you're working on the leg. How tall are you planning on making them? I don't know. I guess that's a good reason they're, they're toe up because you can try them on and see if they're the right length for you. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay, well I still have on my needles um, my new shawl design that I had uh, showed y'all last week. However, I am almost done with it. Let me see. I'm trying to find the right side. Okay, here we go. This is um, my shawl design, like I said, and it's called Striations. It's not up on Ravelry yet. It will be as soon as I finish um, this one and get it photographed and then get the pattern all taken care of. This is on size US 8 5 millimeter needles, and this yarn is, I can't remember, oops, uh, Universal Yarn. This, the blue one, is the classic worsted impressions in it's either Pacific or Civil War I've seen two different names for it and then the other color the striping color is also Universal Yarns but it's the um, Storm Cloud but it's a different line it's the classic shades in Storm Clouds um, so I have about Let's see, the row I just finished is the first half of the fourth ridge. So I have the second half of the fourth ridge and then two more ridges, and then I'll start on the Pico bind-off. And that's good because it's a gift and it needs to get finished. However, I uh, got tired of knitting in blue this week and so took a little bit of a break to work on another project that is also a gift. Although, this person would not have a clue if they would even watch it, seeing as how it's a baby. This is for my nephew for his birthday. He'll be one in December. So I am making the 
braided ball by, um, I think it's Marlene Hardy. I don't know. I'll, I'll link it in the show notes. I can't read my own writing. And I'm doing this on US 5's 3.75 millimeters, and I'm using a bunch of different scrap yarn, yarn that's left over from other projects. And I've finished three of the strips um, out of six. This one is kind of an orange and white. This one is purples and greens. This might look familiar. I did a pair of socks and a bunch of hats and stuff out of this yarn. It's blues and greens. And then the color I'm doing right now is pinks and purples and browns. And then the other two colors will be this gray and white and then this pink and orange. And you do six different strips and then they um, braid together, connect together to make a ball. And it's pretty cool. So that is part of his birthday present. So I pulled that out and started working on it a little bit this week, and it's pretty fast. It's just, um, I think the, it's been like between 20 and 25 stitches to get them all the same width because some of the yarn's a little bit different weight. Um, and then around 68 rows of stockinette for each strip. So it's pretty mindless knitting. Um, so that's what's on my needles, and I should have this shawl done in time for next week's episode, and maybe I'll even have his ball done. It depends. I've got to do another little quick gift knit, um, but it is the season of birthday Christmas gifts, so I've been knitting a lot on that. That's what's on our needles. All right, and now we're going to show you a couple finished objects, and this is kind of unique because Damaris and I actually did these two projects together. Mm -hmm. We did uh, each did little parts of them, and actually these are finished projects from back in July. Ju was it June or July? July. July. Um, we made these for the our team members um, from the Ravelinic Games, and there was 22 members on our team, so we did. Actually, we actually did three knitted projects, but I don't have the third one over here to show you. So we'll just show you these two. So the first thing we did was um, the Heartfelt Rings, which is a Tiny Owl Knits pattern. And I have it on my, my thumb. Um, and we did these on US 7's 4.5 millimeters, and this was out of... Knit Picks palette yarn in the Cotton Candy and Hollyberry, and we alternated the colors, so some of the rings are the darker color with the lighter color hearts. But um, these were real fast knits. At the, what was it like, about seven or eight rows of knitting? Mm -hmm. Something like that. And then, um, and then uh, sewing on the heart, and then what took the longest was the hand felting, um, because we did each ring individually by hand and felted 22 of them as gifts. And then this is the other thing. You want to talk about this one? Mm. Uh, it's a little sweater pin. Sweater in progress pin. Sweater in progress pin. These were done on um, US 1s. 2.25 millimeters, and it was just scrap yarn that I had in my stash. We did pink, green, black, blue, yellow. and yellow ones. Um, and the um, knitting needles are just done out of toothpicks, and then we hot glued little um, round um, beads to the end of them. And we tried to knit them on the toothpicks, but that didn't go over so well. So we ended up actually knitting them on regular needles and then transferring them over. And then they then we just hot glued a little pin on the back. And uh, these were also gifts for our teammates from the Ravelinic Games. So there's a couple of finished objects. On to the next segment. 
And now it's the time for the part of the show that we call Yummies. These are our current favorite things, or things we love right now, things that make us happy. We're kind of blah today a little bit. But we're still here to record for y'all. So um, one of the things I was going to talk about is from the um, Lethal Mystery Shawl Knit Along that um, finished this last week. Um, and I showed y'all that shawl in last week's episode. Um, Lee, um, that designed the pattern, did a uh, drawing for all of us that had finished the mystery shawl. And I won one of the, um, I was one of the ones drawn. And um, I got to choose any one of her patterns. And so I chose the Terra Pin pattern. I'll link it in the show notes. Um, and it's a unisex hat pattern. Um, so I'm looking forward to making that. I think we even convinced Russ to wear one if I knit him one. That's my dad. Yeah. We discussed this over dinner last night. We had four patterns we were debating about which one I should pick. So that's the one we ended up choosing. Um, another yummy is in this last week or so we found out that Bunheads which is one of our new favorite TV shows, will be back in January on ABC Family. And so they are out actually back um, in the studio recording episodes right now. Yay! This is an um, Amy uh, Sherman Palladino show, and ASP also did Gilmore Girls, which is like my very, very favorite ever. Um, but I um, run the Bunheads group on Ravelry, so I'll put a link to that in the show notes if you want to come join us and talk about such a fun show. It's good. We like it. And my other yummy, I guess this is a kind of a two-part yummy. So um, it's that time of year that Starbucks comes out with their red cups. And this is actually a cup from last year or the year before. Last year. Last year? Okay. Um, let's marry with a fox on it. Um, and so I told Damaris since the red cups came out at Starbucks already that I could start using this again. I had put it away. But it's that time of year so I can use it again. And Russ bought me some peppermint mocha creamer at the store. They were out of the pumpkin which I really love. But I like the peppermint mocha one, too. So Russ bought some for, for me at the store the other day. And so now I get to drink peppermint mocha coffee in my red cup from Starbucks. And it makes me happy. What about you, Miss Mare? What's yummy? I got a haircut. I think you got more than one haircut. <laughs> short now. Really short. It's really cute. I like it a lot. This wasn't what you planned, though. No. You want to tell them what you were planning? You tell them. You want me to tell them? Okay, so she told me, the uh, I guess this was about a week ago or so, she was like, I want to cut my hair to the... Um, length of the shortest layer because she had had her hair layered and so the shortest layer was like chin length about mm -hmm. so I call and make the appointment because I needed mine trimmed too so I called and made us appointments at the same time and so we are on our way driving to the hair place and she leans up from the back seat with her cell phone and shows me this picture and she's like I think I want my hair cut like this instead and it's really short haircut. it is turn let us see like the back and the sides so it's really, really short. So Damaris takes after me in that we both have extremely thick hair. <laughs> they could have made probably five wigs out of all the hair they swept up from the floor. <laughs> from her haircut. Oh my gosh, y'all. They were, because she like cut like the bulk of it out at first, like the, the length, and then they went back in, you know, and to shape it. And they must have swept up you know, like a dustpan, probably like this full of hair, like three or four times. <laughs> it's not my fault. Because <laughs> she has so much hair. 
but I really love the new look. I think it makes her look older. If I had more square glasses and a knit sweater and skinny jeans, I could be a hipster. <laughs> I thought you were a geeky girl. Uh, I'm both. No, I'm not a hipster. I don't think I am, at least. So who was who was this picture of that you did the um, haircut? Carrie, Carrie Mulligan. I think that's how you say your last name. She played Sally Sparrow in the 2007 episode of Doctor Who, Blink. Hey, that's like your shirt. Yeah. She has on her keep calm and don't blink Doctor Who shirt today. Yes. I love her haircut. I love short hair. I've had short hair for a long, long time, so I'm a huge fan of short hair. But I think it looks really cute. What else is yummy? Um, I ordered yarn for the sweater I wanted to knit. Yay! Which sweater is this? Dr. Watson's Cabled Crew Knit by... Dye. Someone. I can't remember. I'll link it in the show notes. We had it written down somewhere. By Tr Trudy Brown. Is that her name? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, Trudy Brown. So, what kind of yarn did you order? Um, Barocco Comfort. The color Barley 9703. She knows this because we uh, looked it up last night to order it at night. Yes, and I had it in my phone for like two weeks. So, <laughs> finish up those socks, and that will be her next big project. I just tried them on, and they fit. <laughs> she was like, they fit like a glove. I mean a sock. <laughs> no, I said they fit like a sock, not a glove. Because they're socks, not gloves. <laughs> <laughs> You're silly. Yes. So that's what yeah, what's um, yummy this week. Yummy. <laughs> we have matching fingernails. I didn't know she was going to paint her nails. And do you know, see we both have blue on? Did you copy me? No, you copied me. I was dressed before you were. I have on royal blue, you have on navy blue. But then we both have blue fingernails. I didn't know she was going to paint her nails. I just thought I was going to paint my nails and she was going to keep her nails the same. They were tough chick. Pink. But they were chipping really bad, so I painted mine too. And then we match. Mm. All right, on to the next segment. And now we are going to talk about what we're reading and watching. What you reading? Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Yay, it finally came in to the library. Finally! So, how far into it are you? I finished it today. OMG! Don't say OMG. OMG. Please don't. It, it wasn't that long. Through the looking glass is longer. That was fast. Yeah. It was easy to read. But I'd never read it before, so I wanted to read it. So I guess we need to put another book on hold for you before no. the holidays. Well, yeah. But Through the Looking Glass is in that book, so... Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> so there's more than one book in that book? Yeah, there's just two. Oh. I Alice didn't. in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. I didn't know that. <laughs> So you have some more to read still? Yes. Oh, okay. Alrighty. Well, I just downloaded um, a new book. I haven't started it yet. Um, the planes have returned. They have it out for us. I don't hear them any other time during the week other than when we record. I don't know if we're just kind of oblivious to them. I wonder if it's MJ in air. Cabin Pressure. Yeah, by John Finnemore. Sorry, okay. I'm not going to recite the credits for you. 
even though I know them by heart. This is a BBC radio comedy that we've been listening to. And we're going to listen to it on our drive to place in Texas for Thanksgiving. And we're going to make my dad listen to it, because it has Benedict Cumberbatch, that's why. <laughs> it's funny. It should be, it should prove entertaining for our trip. It deserves awards! So, anyway, what I was saying was, um, <laughs> I have the, um, Prime membership for Amazon, and so I get to download a book for free from the Lending Library every month. And so I just downloaded a new one called Little Deadly Things by Harry Steinman. It's a sci-fi thriller. That sounds pleasant. It's about nanotechnology, apparently, according to the reviews. I know a book series about nanotechnology. Well, it includes nanotechnology. Yeah. So um, I just downloaded it a few minutes ago, and so that'll be the next one I start. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, on to what we're watching. Arrow. John Barrowman was in the end for like two minutes. And that's the only part I really paid attention in. Because this is John Barrowman. I bet he'll be back. I bet he'll... Uh, horror bar. <laughs> I bet he'll be in tonight's episode. Barrowman. Since they've introduced him now. So, um... Okay, I... This is how we watch television every week. We have a sticky note that we write notes on as we watch the shows so that we can talk to y'all about them. So then we read back over them after we've written them, and it's like, oh, I kind of forgot about that, or what does that mean? So, um, okay, so Oliver's mom has the shipwrecked boat that his dad and he were on when it, when it shipwrecked. How do you get a boat after it sinks? They must uh, have um, done salvage operations and gotten it. it. It was like in this big old warehouse, and the guy that his mom's married to now went into the warehouse, and I don't, I think he didn't know about it. Like, I, I don't think he knew that she had it. I think it was a surprise to him. So, that's kind of strange. We'll see what that happens with that, but we also found out that Oliver's mom knows about his dad's list that Oliver has now that he's getting justice and revenge on. So she knows about the list. So she's kind of a shady character. Shady. I think that she is going to cause lots more trouble as this series goes on. Oh my word, I just pulled like 10 stitches off my needles. That is not good at all. Oops. But I'm laughing. Um, and let's see, what else did I write down? Okay, so his former bodyguard has joined him in this vigilante revenge, whatever you call it. And then at the very end of the episode, Oliver was arrested. Because... I saw that. Because his girl, his ex-girlfriend's dad, who is the police guy, found the video where Oliver was putting on the Green Arrow costume and went and took revenge on one of these people from the list. So Oliver is under arrest now. So we'll see what happens tonight. Because it's on t again tonight. Law and Order. Which is not on tonight. SVU. SVU. So it just, um, I don't have a whole lot to say about it other than it really kind of, um, was... Not um, pleasant. Yeah, not pleasant. To it never is pleasant. No, it's not. To watch Amanda's sister having the same kind of relationship with her boyfriend that the kidnapped girl had with this guy that kidnapped her. It was kind of creepy. Ugh, I didn't like it. I'm kind of glad it's not on tonight. I think I need a break from it. Maybe, I think it's back next week, maybe. I don't know why it's not on tonight. I'm not Nothing's sure. Nothing's on. I'm not sure why it's not on tonight. Anyway. Um, person of interest. 
So we finally know who the head of HR is. I don't remember what his name was. But they caught him. We pay very close attention to these television shows that we watch. Well, I can't remember names. I always have trouble remembering names. Um, but Zoe's back. And... Um... We saw, all, we got to see the ro a romantic side to John as he was um, trying to protect this woman, this reporter, in this week's episode. I'm sorry, I drifted off when you said John because I was thinking Barrowman. I thought you were thinking Watson. I was thinking both. No, I'm talking about John from Person of Interest. Oh, that John. Yes. You know lots of Johns. So, um, he has a little bit, we got to see that different side to him. <laughs> okay, so, elementary. It was the Angel of Death episode. Yes. What do you think? I don't know. I guess I liked it. Yeah. We had this conversation last week about how if you don't yes. compare it to Sherlock. Um, I'm going to write a blog post about it. Maybe. I can convince myself to. Okay. So I'm thinking that Joan misses being a doctor, but that she's denying it to herself. She deleted those pictures at the end. Yes. Of herself with all of her doctor friends. That made me kind of sad. It was a good episode, though. It kind of kept you guessing to the end. I was one... This was something I was wondering since the first episode. I was I to sleep. I'm wondering why they didn't make her a soldier like Watson is in the canon. Hmm. Yes. I don't know. Because women can be soldiers, right? Yes. And in in the canon, John goes to war in Afghanistan, and hmm. we have soldiers deployed in Afghanistan, right? Uh -huh. So I'm thinking, why didn't they make her a soldier? I'm not sure. Not sure at all. It's just something that's in my brain, and I ask myself. Yes. Okay, so Fringe. Um, dealing with the emotions from Etta dying. Um, so they were trying to close that the corridor from the future. The future. Yes. And I'm wondering, since it didn't work correctly, if there is more than one corridor to the future? Or did that did the Observer just really trick Peter and it didn't work the way it was supposed to? Or I'm a little confused. The future. The future is now. The future is now. Okay. Um, so then Peter took the little chip thing out of the observer's neck and put it in himself and planted it in himself. I'm not totally sure and it Why? honestly it really kind of creeped me out and I'm really concerned for what he is going to become now that he's implanted this in himself. Why? I don't know. So mm -hmm. that was kind of, that kind of creeped me out a little bit. Um the Resistance posters with Etta on them made me cry. And they had them plastered up everywhere. But I think that Olivia is dealing with losing Etta better this time than she did when she lost Etta when Etta was little. And she's really wanting to maintain her relationship with Peter, which fell apart after they lost Etta the first time. But is Peter going to sabotage that with having implanted this thing in his neck? Yuck. Okay. Once upon a time, Hurley playing the giant. But what's his real name? His real name is, um... You just wrote down Hurley, didn't you? I did, because that's what I call him, is Hurley. That's Garcia. Not, Garcia is his last name. That's not his real name. Uh, I can't think what his real name is. Garcia is his last name. Something. Uh, something. And he hinted on his blog that he 
might be reprising the role of the giant in a future episode. Yay, Hurley! So that that was really kind of fun to watch him play that role. Um, we got a lot of backstory on Emma as to her criminal life and being in jail and getting pregnant. And um, we also saw some of the backstory with August, Pinocchio, and him watching over Edda and such. Edda? Edda. What did I say? Oh, I mean Emma. <laughs> I'm still stuck on fringe. Emma. Um, and then, what else did I say? Oh, Aurora's nightmare that she told Emma, no, she told Mary Margaret about is the same nightmare that Henry was having. What was it? About the red room and the flames. They both described it, like, identically. So there's something going on with that nightmare. I'm wondering if it's magic. And it's been implanted. If the dream, if, if the nightmare's been implanted, have we have we seen Maleficent? Yes. Yeah. Last season. We did. I think so. Okay. I think I'm did. waiting for them to do the Little Mermaid. I'll watch that. That would be cute. I will watch that. Um. Okay. And then Revolution. So we found out who Randall is. Creepy. Creepy guy. From the Department of Defense. Randall creepy guy, Flynn. Um, okay, so here was a question that Damaris and I were discussing earlier. The, in the flashback, the baby boy that Rachel's pregnant with, is that Danny? And if so, where was Charlie during all this? Or was this a different pregnancy that was not successful? Because the baby was sick. So we're kind of confused about that and trying to figure out all that. Um, our other question that we talked a little bit about was, why does the pendant work to turn on the electricity some places, but not all places? Like, because it turned on the lighthouse in the episode Monday night. Um, and Aaron finally told um, Miles about the pendant. And we understand what they were trying to do with the project. They were trying to get um, renewable energy, and it yes. worked in the opposite direction. It turned off all the lights. So, so did they end up going? They must have. Uh, my my assumption is they went ahead and signed a deal with the Department of Defense, and then. At some point, it went widespread because Randall is still in on it. So, more questions. They give us more answers, and we have more questions. I think that's all the TV from this week. That was a lot. Yep. All right. On to the next segment. It's trivia time! Trivia? Yes. So what was last week's question? Last week's question was, in the Harry Potter films, Richard Harris originally did not intend to take the role of Dumbledore. Why and what changed his mind? And we had a new winner this week! Yay! Yay! Who was it? Four Peanuts. She has pink hair. Yes. I we like, like it. We like your pink hair. We love pink hair. I want to dye my hair pink. I used to have pink hair once upon a time. <laughs> I see what you did there. I would dye my hair pink. Yeah. Not today. So what was the answer that uh, Four Peanuts gave that was correct? Okay. Why his own health was in decline and what changed his mind his then 11-year-old granddaughter threatened to never speak to him again if he did not take the role. I like her. I guess that's a good reason to take the role. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. All right. So here is this week's question. In Stargate SG-1, 
the most amazing television series. One of the most amazing. One of the most amazing. <laughs> Richard Dean Anderson played Jack O'Neill to Don S. Davis's George Hammond, but they have an earlier TV connection. So the answer to this question is three-part. We want to know what the television show is that they had an earlier connection in, what role Richard Dean Anderson played in it, and what three roles Don S. Davis had in it. Go away, plane. That's a really loud plane. So we're talking about Richard Dean Anderson and Don S. Davis, who were in Stargate SG-1 together. Mm -hmm. But they have an earlier TV connection. Three-part answer. What show did they have the connection in? <coughs> Excuse me. What was Richard Dean Anderson's role in the show? And what three roles did Don S. Davis have? Three. Three roles. 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 I now think, I want to eat some rolls. I think one of them will be a little tricky. Maybe. I like rolls. So if you know the answer to this question, three-part question, post your answer in the Ravelry group in the episode 11 thread. That's where we'll look for answers. And good luck to everyone this week in trying to figure it out. And that's a wrap for episode 11 of Geeky Girls Net. Now I want to eat a wrap. Are you just hungry? Yeah. We just had lunch. Three hours ago. Oh. Sorry. I will eat anything. But not zucchini or, or tomatoes. Tomatoes? Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Let's call the whole thing off. You say tomato, I say okay. tomato. Okay. We could have a sing-along. No. Um, so thanks for watching. If you want to find us online, we are lots of places. We are everywhere. All over the interwebs. What's an interwebs? The worldwide interweb. What's the worldwide interweb? The intranet. I, I know not of what this intranet is, of what you speak. Yes, you do. So, like we said in the beginning of the podcast, uh, we have a new website, geekygirlsknit.blogspot.com. We are on Ravelry. We are on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Blip TV, iTunes. Is that all? Twitter? I thought I said Twitter. I don't know. Links to everything is on geekygirlsknit.blogspot.com. And our email as well. If you're interested in uh, hosting a giveaway with us or having us review a product or pattern or book, uh, you can contact us. The email is on our website. Um... And I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll both have lots of finished projects next week. Hopefully. That'd be fun. Yes. So with that, happy knitting. And we'll see you next week. Peace.